So, hey, everyone, I have a really special guest today, uh, Dr. Uh, Galen Dietrich. Did I say that right? I'm you sure did. Terrible names. Okay, fantastic. That's perfect. So, perfect. Uh, uh, Dr. Dietrich here. So he's a father of three awesome kids, uh, husband to one amazing wife, friend to uh, a Siberian Husky, like one of my favorite dogs, actually. <laughs> yeah. So he's a practicing dentist, partner and uh, at, at Vita Dental Studio in Santa Fe. He's the CEO of Thrive Dentist, a global virtual continuing education company hell bent on turning learning into earning. So that's the official kind of introduction, but let me give my take on why I think you guys would get a lot of value from listening to, um, to this person. So any dentist who wants to build a fee for service practice, you want to do big cases, you want you know people to drive across the state or across the province or fly down to come and see you because they think you, you know, you offer a level of service that they're not going to get anywhere else. You got to listen to this man, because I've never met a dentist that kind of understands that emotional side of things. Like so many dentists reach out to us and, you know, they, they're, they're tired of accepting all these different PPOs or they're making no money. Um, they want to be that boutique sort of dental practice, uh, you know, where they're offering a level of care that's, you know, beyond what everyone else does. And they think, it's almost like you just buy that, you know, you just hire the right marketing company and they, you know, put in the right SEO code into your website. And it's like, guys, that's not how this works. Like there's a lot of internal business elements you have to understand. Your team has to understand. There's a lot that little things that have to come together before you become that sort of like Mercedes uh, Ferrari experience. It's, it's not as simple as building a little website. And then all of a sudden you're, you're a superstar. And I think a lot of dentists, they kind of get swindled, right? Because there's a lot of companies that are happy to tell them whatever they want to hear that like, mm -hmm. absolutely, Dr. You know, Jones, we're going to, you know, we're going to build the right image on social media and you're going to get a lot of these big cases. And it's like, baloney, no, you are not because there's so much more to this process. So uh, I'm excited to do this uh, chat. I think anybody who wants to kind of, you know, take their practice to the next level, really learn what boutique actually means you know, I, I think they got to listen to what you got to say, because uh, I, I was very impressed. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to, to do this and impart your knowledge. I think it's going to be very valuable to people. Well, I'm, uh, I'm privileged to be here. I'm really grateful for the opportunity, Nick. And I think we're gonna have a great time. I mean, it's just going to be an open and honest conversation about where we're at. So Perfect. hopefully your, your learners get some, you know, your, your people get your audience get some value out of what we're going to talk about. Awesome. So let me give a bit of context of how I've met you, right? So yeah, uh, I was on Dental Town. Uh, so for those who don't know, this is a, like the world's largest community of dentists. You know, it's a free site. You, you go on there and people talk about how to run a practice, financials, clinical skills, uh, like anything you can think of. It, it, it's a fantastic community to, mm -hmm. uh, to learn from because you can see what everyone's doing and, the, and people share a lot of knowledge. So somebody on there made a post about before and after photos. Now I've always kind of hated the way 99% of dentists do these photos because they look terrible. The camera is bad. The quality of the lighting is bad. It's like often you just, they put them up against the wall, like it's a mug shot and they take a photo of their face and they put that little black line across the eyes for privacy. And it, <laughs> it, for me, the, yeah. the impression is it's like, it looks like I'm looking at a body, like a crime scene photo, right? Like it, it's, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen here? Like it, it, the only people that this is going to impress is other dentists, right? Because a, a dentist has the, the clinical knowledge to look at what, what, what happened there and appreciate the, the, the level of work that, that is being done. But your average patient doesn't see that. They just see this Correct. gruesome looking photo. Um, and in and, and, and some dentists, you know, they put their worst cases, like somebody who comes in with like the, you know, looks like they're a crackhead, their, their teeth are missing. Uh, and, I, and I honestly think some patients, the, the impression they get is like, oh, maybe this dentist specializes with like people that are in like the carnival or something like that. Like, I just have a small <laughs> problem. I don't, maybe this isn't the right place for me. Right. Right. So you posted right. how you guys do your before and after photos and I was really impressed. So like, we're going to put some of them up on the video so you guys can see, mm -hmm. uh, but they were at a level that, you know, I, I could tell these people really understood how to sell um, the image, the emotion behind it. They, they really know how to put the spotlight on the patient that I'm not trying to showcase uh, my clinical skills or what tools I use or the sophistication of the procedure. Like I, I'm really trying to show how much we've improved this person's life and how great they feel. And, and, you know, 
what they were dealing with before and the challenges that, that they were facing because they weren't happy with their smile and, you know, uh, and how they feel afterwards. So uh, I realized like these people really get it. They understand how to uh, create the right content that would engage someone on an emotional level. Cause I mean, ultimately it's an emotional decision. No one's going to come in and pay for, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 implant case uh, because they're impressed with the type of implant you right. place or the, the, the composition of the implants, you know? Um, so I, I reached out to you and I was like, who does this for you? This is really good stuff. And I was surprised when you said, Nobody does like we do this. This is a part of our in-house capability. We realize like we we really yeah. need to have this in you know it's not some, something we paid for once. Uh, it's something we do ourselves. We bought the equipment. Mm-hmm. We set up the right space. We we you know. Um, so walk me through that. Like sort of, did you just like photography? Like what, what is did you have a passion for it, or did you realize this is what we need to do to stand out? It's you know this is the type of stuff we need. So what was your thinking behind doing all this stuff? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's it's one that I think a lot of dentists do ask. You know, they're asking themselves, I, I they have a vision of where they want to go. And that vision is usually influenced heavily by what you see on whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Dental Town or wherever. Um, but there's there's that hard part of understanding actually where you currently are. I think it's like the part that everyone skips past is like, yeah, where are you actually at right now? What's a true awareness of what your capabilities are? So I, I was not a talented photographer. I had I, I didn't know what an f-stop was. I didn't know how to adjust that shutter speed. You know, I knew nothing about any of that. Mm-hmm. So what it came down to was an awareness first off that okay, I'm I have no idea how to create that. But the reason why I want to create that is because I do want people to have an easier experience saying yes. And I think that's what probably one of the bigger like macro values here, Nick, is that yeah. if you've used the word sale a couple of times, right? Sell or sale. And that's a word that most people in, on the planet, not just in us, have an aversion to because mm-hmm. it feels like you're doing something to someone. Like manipulative, but, you're trying to influence yes. them. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. You're going to convince someone of something that they maybe don't want. And I think that that is because a lot of people do treat it that way. A lot of people are manipulative in the way they approach it. But if you're good at what you do and you believe in the talent that you have and you believe that what you do is is for the betterment of those that are on the other side of it, then actually all sales really is, is getting more people into your sphere of influence so that you can help them. And so I look at sales very much as not what you do to someone, but what you do for someone. And that was a very motivating factor for me to saying, okay, well, then I need to figure out how to make it really easy for a person to say yes. And the best way to do that is to know what you're buying. If you go to a dentist, we all know this, there's, there's some dentists that you let in your mouth and others that you definitely wouldn't. And yeah. the, way, the, way, right, the way you judge that is by the quality of the work. Now, as dentists, how do you present that in a way that's not scary to the patient, but also informative? And that was really where I wanted to take things. So spent a lot of time and money um, hiring actual photographers to help me. <laughs> so I, I, tra- I was trained by photographers like, here, here's what I would do here. Here's how you take portraits of people. And we started to basically create a system behind that. And mm-hmm. what I found out is that it was actually, it was kind of complicated, quite honestly, Nick. It was just, yeah. It looks Photography easy when you see an expert doing it, but the reality yeah. is like, it, it, you know, that's, that's the brilliance of it is that uh, the people that are really good at it, they make it seem easy, but when you break it down, there's actually a lot of uh, depth and nuance to, to, you know, many of the elements. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And so I was very aware of like, man, this is, I'm not sure I can replicate this. Like you guys teach me that's cool, but this is very difficult stuff. And at least it felt that way. And the more we kind of worked with it, we started to develop a system that then the photography was, was very doable. The problem was then like, how do you insert it into a workflow? The workflow piece is huge for a dentist because uh, I always have, the, there's three words for people to write down in your audience. Three words that kind of, if you go back to these over and over again, it's going to be very helpful for you. The first is where you start or where you want to end up, which is success. Right. Success is where we all want to be, no matter what it is, whether it's your relationship with uh, someone you love, a friendship, your business, your dentistry, you want it to be successful. For it to be successful, you have to, it has to be sustainable, right? Dentistry has to last. Your marriage has to last. Your friendships have to last. And so sustainability is like that one step back. Mm -hmm. But for something to be sustainable, 
meaning you're able to consistently do it over and over again, it has to be simple. Mm, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So the very, very crux of it all is like, that was the question I kept coming back to is, can I make this more simple? Can I make this workflow like five minutes to take all these great photos? Can it be that right. easy? And could I even train a staff member to do the same thing that I'm doing so that I can keep producing and they can hammer this all out? So that was yeah. the question. And I'll, honestly, we didn't have an answer for it at first, but we kept refining and refining and refining. And we've been doing it for about six, seven years now. And, and now it's just that. It's something that's very, very doable for anyone. Yeah, that, that was the first thing I, I thought to myself. I was surprised when you guys did it in house. And the the sort of second concern, like the concern I had then is like, are you guys just like a unicorn where it's like, I don't know if the average dentist could do something like this. Like, uh, is this really teachable or are you guys like, uh, you know, one of a kind kind of thing? Uh, so w- what's your thought? I mean, you've been doing this for a while. Obviously, you've systemized the thing. Is this something... Yeah. The, the, the level of like how you do your case studies and photos and all the material that you're using during treatment presentation, during that whole process, uh, is this something your average dentist, you know, assuming that the, the, you know, they have the ambition to like want to learn, could they do it? Or do you need an yeah. eye for it? You need like some sort of talent that, you know, maybe some of them don't have it. Yeah, no, it's, it's such a good question. And I know that my idea or my mission behind bringing together some coursework behind it and all that was to teach it. But the reality is you don't know until you try, until you try to teach people, right? right? Can they actually do it? And so I was actually a little bit nervous and worried about that. Part of that is because I do come from a fairly artistic family. I, I didn't take photos before. I didn't know anything about a camera really. But I have a fairly uh, artistic background and, in music and other things. And so I do think there is an element, Nick, it's a very good point. Yes, there is something that people innately have when it comes to like a design, right? Like a Tom Ford, not everyone's going to be a Tom Ford. Like that's mm-hmm. just not possible. But he also has trained his eye over time. And so if a person's committed, I think you can actually, you can absolutely up level. It's are you learning from a place where a person is inspiring you with this, with a system, the scaffolding to allow you then to fill in that, that muscle and flesh right. that makes it feel more like you. And so, right. yeah, what I can tell you is that it's a hundred percent doable for anybody. The level that you want to take it to is dependent upon your passion behind it and your, your natural acuity. But if you want to take clinical photos like I do, you could learn that honestly in about probably two to three modules of our stuff. You're going to know exactly how to do it, what gear to have done. So it is something that's very simple from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the goal. Like, as like you said, to make it sustainable, like I've seen dentists, they, they do these sort of projects where they do a one-off, but uh, you know, it, they look at it as like, this is so hard. I don't want to do this again. Right. And it's like, it's like where you went off. It's like, it's not sustainable because you really didn't break it down to be something simple. And yeah. in all honesty, a lot of like consultants and companies they work with, they want to make sure it's not simple because then you won't need them anymore. Right. So um, <laughs> yeah. your photographer doesn't want to teach you how to do this so that you can create your own little mini studio and, and teach your staff how to, you know, make this as part of the workflow. Uh, so that's right. what I liked with your program is that you're not trying to like, first and foremost, you're a dentist, you're running a business, uh, you know, your, your goal isn't to just like teach people how to do photography, but I'm going to imagine there's enough of them that like were impressed with what they saw from you that they, like me, they reached out and thought, oh, how do I do this? I'd like walk me through this. What is your process? Cause this is very interesting. So yeah, I know yeah. a lot of them are going to wonder, um, is it worth investing time and money into doing this? Like, is it worth building a little studio? Is it worth learning a bit more about how to take these nice photos um, you know, can you share with us sort of, uh, what results have you seen from it? Right. Cause I I'm convinced like if you have the type of content that like, if they have the type of content you have, then yes, it's going to convert more people from the website. It's going to more people that are coming in for consultations or going to accept treatment. Uh, but maybe you could share with us, like what sort of a success have you seen since implementing this as a core part of the business as a core part of the workflow? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's always so important to come back to just the human element of who we are because you can get very trapped in, I'm a dentist, I fix teeth. And Mm -hmm. because we get trapped in that, I think we start to go down the rabbit hole of being in 
healthcare versus also realizing that we're business owners. Mm -hmm. Even if you're an associate, I don't even care if you're an associate or if you're in public health, which I've done both of those things. I know what that's like. You should have some vested interest in the production and growth of the business. That yeah. that's a good skill set and a good mentality to have. So I will use it later, later, even if you buy you that will. practice or you open up your own practice. Yeah, you need to absorb more than just the you know the clinical work you're doing. You have to absorb the business of, elements. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and your reputation, right? I mean, you, you're going to yeah. want to have something that you're building towards. So, from a human perspective, if um we're remodeling our house right now. It is extremely helpful when a person says, hey, this is what I've done before. Here's another job. Do you like this or do you like this or do you like this? And I can visually see that, right? Because you're giving me evidence that one, you can do it. And two, you're helping me connect on the most basic level, which is visual. We're very visual people first. So even if I told you, yeah, no, it totally works. It totally works. That's me trying to convince you that I can teach you this and it totally is going to like change your practice on a fundamental level. Just understand why it does. It does because if you're on a menu and you're looking at a menu, that's just a bunch of like terms like, Hey, here's the linguine. Okay, cool. But there's no picture. It's a lot harder for you to build up that appetite for that's the thing I want. You see a couple of pictures and you start to feel like, Ooh, salivary glands start popping off. And you're like that, that's connecting for me. Right. So that's a huge, huge element of why I do what I do is that I actually, I'm not trying to make it so artistic that's beyond you. We don't, um, I don't market a bunch of 26 year olds and their before and afters because that's not my demographic. My demographic is largely 60 to 70. Mm -hmm. So you you get what I'm getting at? Like I'm getting at the photos and the video you choose. It works because I'm targeting the demographic with what they need to make an informed decision, which is why I think it's so in service to people. And that's why it works. Mm -hmm. So are you, uh, I I totally get it because you you make an interesting point there. A lot of people, you know, they come in and they give you this like quote from the patient management system, you know, like it's almost like a parts invoice. It's the the stuff I used to see, like when I was like doing (laughs) IT for engineering, like, you know, it's like, I need six units of this five. It's like, I'm not building a motor here. Okay. It's a human being like, you know, you, you, so I think, yeah, if you show yeah. them, it's like, here's what we did for this patient. And here's kind of the journey. Uh, they can put themselves into the, like they can more visualize um, what the end result is going to be like. Uh, Cause I think that often, yeah, they, they, they're just handed this quote. It's like, okay, call us back when you're ready. It's like, what am I looking at? You know, like, right. you know, you're going to need two implants going to cost this for the x-ray. It's going to cost like, you know, they, they itemize everything. It's like, I'm, I'm not, buying, you know, uh, supplies at like, you know, Home Depot here. <laughs> it, it, it's a journey. Yeah. So did you find yeah. that like when you're using this work, uh, you're, you're just, you're seeing more case acceptance or um, obviously you've been doing it for years. So you wouldn't have continued to do it if you didn't see any impact. Right. Um, right. So walk me through like what, what, what felt like once you had more of these case studies, uh, you know, what changed and how were you using them? It's like, uh, you, yeah. would you pick out the right one for the right person or would you go through a few of them? So how does that treatment presentation work exactly? Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of pearls on this one because I think it's, um, I think it's very valuable for, mm-hmm. for your audience. So one of the things that I would write down for everybody, because to me, the visual side of things um, and the course that we teach around that is really like, it's kind of inextricably linked to the sales side of things. Mm-hmm. You've brought that up a couple of times, and I think it's really, really great because you have to have just being emotionally attached to something visually and seeing that, you still need the experience behind it. You need someone to walk you through it. You get this parts list. Yeah, like I can have some visuals there. That's going to help, but you still have to walk me through as a human being from step one to completion. Mm -hmm. And so there's a process there, and that's a sales process. Um, That's a case acceptance process. And it has, it has to be ordered and it has to make sense. So the way I look at it is this. I imagine that every person that comes into my practice doesn't know anything about what I'm going to propose. Mm-hmm. And we're a very total health, comprehensive focus practice. That doesn't mean everybody gets a full arch. It just means that I'm looking for what's the comprehensive solution for you. And mm-hmm. that's the direction that we're going to take you, which usually means higher dollar amounts, which means more hesitancy, more reticence to accept that treatment. So this is what I want your people to write down. 
you, sales can be boiled down to a very simple phrase. It is the calibration of a, a person's internal values to your external value. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if a person values honesty, integrity, evidence-based stuff, visuals, you name it, those are internal values that they have. You gotta go buy a car, you're looking for certain values that are represented in the thing that you're going to buy. Mm -hmm. That's why we buy things is because they validate our internal belief systems. So right, you have right. to raise, if you're saying, hey, it's a $50,000 treatment plan, that number is gonna be really shocking to somebody if their internal values do not validate your set point. Yeah. So the whole process of sales is step-by-step step getting a person to a place where their internal values look at your dentistry and say, oh, if I have that, I, I get to experience life this way. I get mm -hmm. to embody health this way. It gets to impact my life this way. So unraveling the whole puzzle, what I would suggest then is that if you're going to look at how to implement a few pearls right away, the first thing is insert visuals at the right place in the right time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dentists want to jump towards educating a patient right away and they over-educate them into analysis paralysis. Yes, yeah, and I, it's not just the dentist, it's even the staff. Like sometimes the more right. experienced they are, like you listen, to, like, like we listen to 50,000 calls a month, right? Across practices in US and Canada. You start to see like there's some practices that will, um, you know, they'll book like 70% of new patient calls to appointments and some, the average one will book one out of three, like 30% into appointments. And often when, you, you know, the people that do a good job really engage on an emotional level, try to understand the patient, ask the right questions and kind of like learn their sort of like, you know, where are you at and how did you get there? And what are you really looking for? Like, what, what does success yeah. mean to you? And the ones who are, you know, they're, you know, been working in dentistry for 20 years, they're incredibly knowledgeable they just go on a random tangent as if like, let me show you how smart I am. Oh, it sounds like it might be a problem with this. And I, I think we're going to need to do It's like, the, the, by the end of the call, the person is like, is more confused than when they first call. Right? So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And amongst yeah. all the receptionists, like there's maybe a couple hundred of them in, that, that are, that we would monitor across all of our client base. It's like the best ones were sometimes like people who had worked in the restaurant industry and a year ago, they didn't even know anything about dentistry. Right. But they understand how to engage on an emotional level. And I think some as dentists, especially fall into this pitfall of it's too technical. You're, you're, you're trying to show me too many like medical elements. You're, you know, you're not helping me understand, like see, you know, here's how life is going to feel once we do this and look at right. what, like how these other people, like the journey that they went through, uh, it, there's that disconnect. So you're right. When, when they're presented with the price, it's like, we're not really at the same level. I'm, I'm somewhere else and your values are something different. And often these, the, the dentists, the staff, they don't even understand what the value of the patient was. It's like, well, they want to fix right. their teeth. It's like, well, hold up a second, but why, what's the emotional reason? Are they, uh, you know, do they feel embarrassed in public? Do they feel like, um, I don't like myself when I look in the mirror. I don't like that, you know, like what, what is it there? Uh, so it, it's interesting how you break it down. So, uh, yeah. Are you then, asking but, the right questions to, uh, learn what their values are? Like how, how does that piece work exactly? Like how do you, yeah. how do you get them to the, the same? Yeah, we have a whole, I have a seven step process, seven steps, mm -hmm. which might seem like a lot of steps, but when you break it down to the time frames and appointments that are, are required for that. It's very, they build upon one another mm -hmm. and it works really, really well because we're always using visuals from step one to step seven, but in different ways. It's not like here's number before and after here's number before and after, uh, everything has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Every single visual has a purpose. So for example, what you're doing and with rev up a big part of what I would imagine you require for your clients to do extremely well is you need consistency. Yes. You need yes, this, right? Absolutely. Yes. Right. It's consistent. Yeah. You, one, one receptionist will say one thing. Another one will say something so random. Uh, another one, the, the next day she explains something totally different. Oh my God. I have so many <laughs> stories to tell you that are, are going to make you laugh. Like, yeah. What we hear on the phone. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Consistency is huge. Yeah. Right. So from the front end, right? Like the, one of the, the very first step of our seven steps is awareness. Mm -hmm. If a person's not aware of a problem, there's no problem to fix. 
Yeah. So that's a huge part of why you use visuals is to showcase, right? If I show a person, a woman who's already fairly beautiful, 24, 25 years old, and I'm like, man, the change is dramatic. It's gorgeous. But it's not really to most people. They look at and they're like, maybe a little long, maybe they're a little bit wider. I don't know. That's very common. You'll see that a lot on Instagram. If a yeah. person has jaw joint dysfunction or airway issues or a bunch of mismatched crowns or whatever, they don't relate to that. Yeah. So that's going to, that's going to really limit your awareness. So using the right photography for your clientele is super important. If you have a website and you're building a website and trying to bring traffic to it, people are going to be, you know, doing the hotspot top to bottom and then exiting out of the page. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing in between that says I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's part of the consistency is it's not just the frequency of what people do. I think we think of consistency, like how often are you doing it? There's also like the consistency of, of the thing that something's made out of that. That's another like way of looking at consistency. So you have to think about what is my primary audience interested in? What do they Mm -hmm. actually have as a problem? And let me present that in a way where they can attach, attach to it and say, Oh, I experienced that same problem. Mm-hmm. email mm-hmm. list. That's a huge deal, right? You have all these emails as dentists for your patient pool and no one talks to their patients that way. What they do is they say like, Hey, we have a 25% off bleaching special. No one cares. Yeah. What yeah. they do care about is, Hey, we just walked, you know, Susan through this and this is what she was experiencing. And this said she came with the other side. Hope you guys enjoyed the case done. Yeah. Awareness. It's all you're looking for. Right. Yeah. So I think that's a huge piece, social media. You want to be doing it enough for people to think, oh, this dentist, he or she does this a lot. They must be really good at it. If you have yes. one post from four years ago, no one's going to trust you. So that's another yeah. piece. Of it, that's the right? thing is like, I've seen some dentists, like they'll hire a video crew. They'll, they'll do some really nice case studies, but they're from like six years ago. And it's like, they've done yeah. two of them because it was a big project because, you know, they don't know how to like... They didn't simplify it to systemize it, to, to make it a core part of their business strategy that like every case that they're, they're trying to do, you know, the, uh, like uh, gathering material, they just did two or three of them, you know, years ago. And then the impression people get is like, I guess you weren't very successful with, I mean, what about, you know, to, 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 yeah, live this year, you know, like you ever seen those people have like reader's choice awards from 2007. It's like, so what happened since then? Did you not win any of the prizes? Right. So um, right, yeah. it's got to be a core part of the, like, you're always collecting the stuff and then you, you're understanding how to use it at the right time. Because sometimes some, like what we see with a lot of practices, they plaster this stuff everywhere, hoping somebody bites. There isn't a lot of thinking behind when is the right time to show what, right? It's either like you're, you're, you're doing things in the wrong sequence, right? Like, like, you know, you're, you're doing adrenaline implant. There's a sequence you follow. You can't mix it up and kind of wing it. You have to follow proper step. Right. So, and then you slowly kind of get them to your level. So no, that I, I I totally agree with that. Um, Now, what I'm most curious about is, you know, you're a practicing dentist, you're doing a ton of these cases. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, you're a really busy guy. Like I am, you know, uh, just from talking to your team, it's, it's like, you've got a lot on your calendar uh, and you're also putting these interesting courses together. So do you yeah. like enjoy the teaching? Like, what is it that made you want to, cause you didn't strike me as somebody that uh, like their goal is to just, you know, be a consultant. Like you're obviously, you love right. doing what you do. Uh, did a lot of people reach out to you and it's like, Hey, it's just easier if I just put it into a program instead of people harassing me all day long. Like what was the motivation behind uh, creating, you know, the, the thrive dentist uh, yeah. and all these great programs? No, thanks a lot. That's a, it's a very good question. Um, it's actually a very, it's a very insightful question. I've always liked teaching and, you know, teaching in, in very odd ways, like in dental school, I would help the first and second years as a fourth year, I go into clinic after hours and help like, you know, three or four students that were just having a hard time with prep design or whatever. And honestly, there's a selfish element to it because it makes me way better. Mm. When you know how to teach something um, or you're going through that process, it really shows you the holes in your armor. And you're like, oh, actually, I'm not really entirely sure why we do that. And, oh, I hadn't actually thought about this. Someone else's hands found a problem that I, oh, wow, you just saved me from something. Mm -hmm. So there's a selfish element to it. And then I really do enjoy teaching because it makes me, I think, substantially better. Mm -hmm. Um, And and you have to hold up your, like a certain level of integrity because people are looking up to you to have answers. 
So there's yeah. a there's a challenge to it. But I also feel like the coursework, it kind of came about because people were asking questions. And I thought, you know, I don't think education's done right. I and mean, that's oh, maybe definitely. an arrogant yeah, yeah. maybe it's an arrogant statement, but I I know that I would go to CE courses, some of the top courses in the world, from you know the Jason Smithens to Newton Falls to Bob Martis's, you name it, the people who are really good at what they're doing, Carlos de Carvalho. And the emphasis was always clinical, which, yes, yes. which is awesome. Like I love that. And they're so good at what they do. Mm-hmm. But what most people don't realize is a lot of these people who are on the lecture circuit, you can talk about John Coyce, you can talk about Frank Spear, you can talk about Carlos de Carvalho. They're so talented and they don't practice the same way that we do. Yeah. They're not seeing patients that way because they're on the lecture circuit, you know, yes. 40 weeks of the year. So there's a different amount of time invested that doesn't detract from it. It just means if you're going to learn how to have a successful practice, you have to learn from people who also are in the trenches with you. And so for me, I have turned down a lot of lecture uh, opportunities and I consistently do because I don't, I don't care to be on the road a bunch. What I care to do is actually live the things that I'm teaching. And to me, that's more important than being out and about every other weekend doing that kind of thing. So that's how the courses really started to evolve is a desire to bring coursework from learning to earning. I don't want you to have a bunch of head knowledge. I want you to say, okay, maybe I have enough. Maybe I've learned enough. The question now is how do I integrate it to get the results? How do I work with a company like RevUp and actually give them the things that they need versus finding every little shiny object and distraction and yeah. never focusing on like the main thing that helps your practice grow? No, I, I, I so agree with that. Cause like all of the courses that I've looked at, like you're right. most of it is clinical, right? So um, like an implant program, right? So people will go and, and then, you know, every course will teach you a really great job with the theory. Right. Um, so you go in and they're like, I don't know, in a hotel conference room kind of thing. And you're, you're, you're learning the theory and you practice on a type of Right. And they're like, okay, you're good. You, you got it. Right. Good. Go for it. It's like, what do you mean? Go for yeah. it. Like, like, uh, I need to practice. Like, I've never done this before. It's like, so some courses you can bring your patients, but who's going to trust you at that stage? Like your mother-in-law, like who's going to come in like, Hey, I've never done an implant before. Can I take you to the course? I can practice on you. Like, no. Right. Um, so a lot of them will, you know, they'll go and they'll fly out to like, uh, you know, Mexico, Dominican, you know, practice a bunch of implants really quickly, but they're not even there to see the whole restorative side of it. It's just like right. you drill and you fly, fly back home. And then next year you, you show up to the advanced program where you fix all the first year students mistakes. Right. Um, and then even with all of that, it's like, guys, like, how is your staff being trained? How do you, how do they talk to patients? How are you presenting treatment? How are you finding people? Like uh, all of these business elements, everybody kind of glosses over like, ah, don't worry, you'll, you'll figure that stuff out. It's like, what are you talking about? Right. That's more, that's just as important as you understanding the clinical side, just, you know, uh, like, great. It's, it, you learn how to do the conventional, you learn how to do the, the guided surgeries, you know, you practice, you placed a couple implants, like, what about the business side of it? And you're right, like a lot of these courses don't teach it because primarily they're flying around the country doing, you know, constant courses on just the clinical training. So what I liked with your program is that you had some that really stood out to me. So one of them was like, uh, how to do virtual consultations. How does that yeah. work? Like, what do you talk about? How do you engage with them? Because it's not as simple as, yeah, download Zoom and pop on a call and just chat and see what happens. Like, this is not going to work that way, right? So uh, you've got a process for like, how do you integrate this into the workflow? What what yeah. part does it is it in? Like, what do you talk about? Because uh, that's just one small step. And it, eventually, there has to be a face to face consultation. And you you can't you're not going to have them open their mouth on camera to see what's going on. Like, you know, but you <laughs> yeah. have to build enough trust and rapport that they, you know they like you, they trust you, they want to come and see you. And then you know, what do you talk about then to 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 move yeah. the process forward? Um, you know, you've got a course about you know how do you build a fee for service practice because. Here's the thing, like most offices, dentistry is a unique uh, sort of industry. Like if you've got a thousand dentists in the room and you say, guys, put your hands up. If your practice treats patients like family, all 1000, put their hands up, right? It's like, okay, great. Put your hands up. If you feel your practice offers a level of dentistry, that's beyond what the average dentist offers. All 1000, put their hands up, right? And and for me, it's something like, guys, are you on drugs? Like I went to your practice, okay? (laughs) Uh, I walk in and the decor looks like it's from the eighties. 
right? It like looks like you don't care, yeah. right? So it's like you don't care about your aesthetics. Would you going to care about my my mine? Like you know, it, it's yeah. subconscious, right? Um, you know, the, the staff don't even look up to greet you. They're like, hi, can I help you with something? It's like, okay. Like my wife was yeah. actually at the practice just uh, uh, two weeks ago. She went to a dentist. She was in a room, waiting room with like four other patients. Somebody called because they had to cancel an appointment because their babysitter fell through or something happened. Mm-hmm. or was some sort of emergency. The receptionist tone is very like, you know, rolling her eyes, like, okay, whatever, we know we canceled it. And then they spent 15 minutes, the two receptionists spent 15 minutes talking to each other, bitching about the patient, right? Uh, And, uh, you know, there's four other patients in that waiting room listening in, right? It's like, well, what kind of experience do you think you're going to have there? Um, I've seen another case. It was really funny. uh, There was a practice who was trying to do more implant cases. So we started doing the marketing. We started getting more consultations for them. And, you know, a lot of them kind of fell through. So, you know, I'm curious, like, what's going on? Like, people don't call a dentist uh, asking about, you know, cosmetic procedures for fun. It's not like they woke up that day, it's like, my teeth are perfect. I'm happy with them. <laughs> but out of curiosity, I'm just wondering, like, you know, what would an implant cost? Like, that person wants to buy dentistry, right? And usually by the time they call an office, they, they've they had something that's bothered them, you know, something about their smile for years. It's, it's not Correct. like... They, yesterday they were happy today for whatever reason, they don't like how they look. They were probably 100%. bothering them for a long time. So patient comes in and I'm, you know, I'm looking at their practice. It's like, well, where do you do these presentations? Right. So they don't have a presentation room. They do it in the staff lunchroom and I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, it's like cluttered. And you know, there's, you know, this, this is not a professional environment. Uh, so yeah. they're trying to pitch like a $20,000 implant case. And there's another staff member like heating up a pizza pocket in the microwave in the background. Right? So like, uh, you know, when, when you ask them, like, so what happened with that patient? It's like, no, oh, they didn't book. I don't, I don't think they were very serious about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that's what happened. It's like that person wants right. to fix their teeth. What they weren't sure about is why they should, whether they should go to you or to somebody else. And right. I think those, those, um, uh, emotional aesthetic sort of elements like dentists don't quite understand how important they are. Like, mm-hmm. what does it feel like when I call this business? Like, how do they talk to me? Like, like do I really, is it, do I feel that like they're really experts at what they do? You know, if I call mm-hmm. five, six places to, to, add, to inquire, am I left with the best first impression from this practice or some other practice? What's it like when I first step into the office? Do people greet me warmly? Do they offer me a cup of coffee? Do they, you know, like, like what's that experience like when they're explaining, right. um, you know, things to me, are they just reading off a parts list? You're going to need three of these and four of these, and this is what's going to cost. And this is how we take the payment and we have, you know, financing if you need it, or are they kind of like engaging them with on an emotional level and, and, you know, showing them like, here's how we help these other patients. And here's like what the end result was like. Um, mm. I, so when you're saying like, you know, there's a number of different steps, I get it. Like, it's not as simple as like, oh yeah, you just implement this. And then all of a sudden you're going to be a success. You and your whole team really need to understand the different stages someone has to go through mentally, emotionally, before they're going to say yes. Um, Mm -hmm. And people love to think that, oh, it's all about price or price shopping. It's not true. Like uh, years ago, you know, I, I, when, whenever we hire a new employee, we get them um, like a MacBook because it's I, I never have to deal with IT issues. I used to run an IT company. It's like, I'm not going to need a Windows computer because I'm going to teach antivirus. <laughs> we'll get a Mac. It. It's, it's it. simple. <laughs> so I went to the Apple store, right? And, you know, you walk in, there's like a person at the front and they, they kind of greet you, right? So there was a lady who came in just before me and I can overhear their conversation. So on this particular day, it was like, they, it was like Black Friday or some sort of pro, like everybody in the mall had balloons and flyers, Right. But Apple Store had nothing. It just looked like the everyday Apple Store, right? So she she went up to him uh, and was like, "What kind of uh, deals you guys got going on today?" It's like uh, nothing, right? And she was like really surprised. It's like it's like what do you mean? Like everybody's got promotions on like whatever, like Black Friday, whatever it was. And I'll never forget what he said to her. It was like it was shocking. It was like he looked at her. It was like man, like this is Apple. Like there's not really any promotions ever. Like we don't need to, like everybody won't right. like, you know, it's good products. Right. And, uh, I looked inside and I was like, the whole place was filled. Like everybody wants these things, right? Like right. the whole place. And she went in and as well and started looking at products. Right. So when you think about it, it's like Apple puts a lot of thought into how the keys feel, 
you know, how, how the laptop feels, how it opens, right? Like most people, like most of the other companies are just like, who cares? It's, it's a, you know, it's just a laptop. This has 16 gigs of RAM and this, you know, this more like the processor is this fast and that's all that matters, right? Like you're getting a lower price for a better performance computer. And it's like, you guys really don't get it. It's like, uh, those emotional aesthetic elements play a huge role. Think of how many students you have on there that are like they're they're you know forty thousand dollars in student debt, but they got to have a MacBook, right? How many people mm-hmm. are like living paycheck to paycheck, oh, yeah. but they'll spend fifteen hundred dollars on a phone? It's like why? Because if they <laughs> feel like it's yeah. gonna, it's something special. It's something that is going to reflect. It, it 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 hits their values, right? It's that right. like I'm not average. I'm not. I'm looking for something better. If they see value in what you do, they will find a way to pay for it. Right. Right. Uh, but if you don't know how to communicate with them on that level and really understand like what, what their value structure is and how to communicate that, that like we can help you meet that, you're not going to get in or they're going to look at it like how many people spend hundreds of dollars on a nice pair of shoes, but they'll go to Walmart and they'll buy a pack of socks, three packs for ten dollars because the shoes reflect like, you know, it, people will perceive how I look and it's going to reflect, you know, me as an individual, but the socks are utility. So if you position yourself as a utility type of practice, people are always going to see you like, oh, you do the same right. thing everyone else does. But if you know how to engage with them on an emotional level, then the sky's the limit then. Then people will yeah. fly down to, to see you and they're, you know, two states away because they really think you can deliver something that nobody else can. Um, right. So no, I, 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 I love it. So um, how can dentists sort of get started, right? Because I, I, you've got a lot of interesting programs. Like the one that really caught my eye was how to do virtual consults, especially now with COVID and, you know, people are busy. Like, you know, uh, there's no way you're going to sell treatment over a Zoom call, but it's a, such a great first step to meet them and, and build some trust and rapport. Uh, you've got a program about, you know, how, did, how does a fee-for-service practice work? Like, what are the elements you really need to put into this business so that people will actually want to pay you the money? Uh, yeah. What's a good place for them to start? Like, uh, do, is there a certain track you recommend? Like, if a dentist is listening to this and it's like, okay, I want to I want to build some of this stuff into my business, what's the best place for them to start? Well, I mean, before I tell you that, I think it's actually really interesting what you're bringing up with Apple because it ties into this, this, this current question. I've had, and this is certainly not to brag, this is just, I, I think it's the reality of the way things actually are. Mm-hmm. And in contrast to what the kind of the deception that people have been led to believe, and that is that you have to discount to bring people in. That you yeah. have to cut your price to get people in. That's the only way. Well, you're competing then with everyone else who's cutting their price. And so it becomes this like race to the bottom. Yeah. And what you've actually done is you have denigrated and lowered the value of mm-hmm. what you're actually creating. And what people don't realize is they're like, okay, well, I'm going to do a sale for this weekend, but then it's going to go back up. Every time you do that, you're actually training people how to perceive you and how to yes. treat you. Yeah. So that's why it matters with your front desk. That's why it matters with your hygienist. That's why it matters how your social media presence is. That's why it matters what your website looks like because all of that is the consistency of who you are and the integrity of your value. So if you uphold the correct value on all those things, you actually stand out more. And what people don't realize is that probably one of the strongest reasons why people will at least be interested in purchasing from you, buying from you, becoming a patient is novelty. Yeah. How different are you? And that's actually one of the reasons why I think photography is so powerful. If you have beautiful photography, I can't tell you how many patients like you, when you, when you saw the stuff, right, you like look at it and you're like, that's different. I never seen that before. Yeah. Immediately it captures a patient's attention. They're like, oh, you see pictures up on the wall of photographs we've taken. They've never seen that before in any office. And mm-hmm. so they kind of want to stay because they're intrigued. That's a huge, huge element. And I'll say for the virtual consults, we I sell people all the time, have case acceptance present, presented. There's a whole process behind that. I walk you through in terms of like, you know, what you need from accurate records and how to get those and obtain those if they're, you know, uh, 50 miles away, 2000 miles away. Mm-hmm. I've had patients sign up, never met them before, and they fly out and they put down 50 grand. And they say, mm-hmm. here, we're going to go. Why? Because they do that for plastic surgery. 
Yeah. They do it all the time. People yeah. are trained to do that. Actually, you don't have to meet you in person. So it's the sky's the limit when you do things in integrity with who you actually want to be versus trying to fit in and become a commodity. Don't be a commodity. Yeah. You'll be value-based. Right. So yeah. anyway, that's just a little, little shtick there, but I think you're right on, on target with what you're saying. And I, and I love what you do. I, I love that you're bringing this kind of value to your people that way. So, yeah. Uh, Cause no, for us, like the biggest challenge we deal with is like, we, we can create a presence for them that makes them look like a, you know, Ritz Carlton hotel. But if when they start to interact with you and the team and everybody in the practice, they get that motel six experience, right. It doesn't <laughs> work because uh, there's, yeah. there's this jarring disconnect and they all feel like, Oh, they didn't accept treatment. I don't think like the leads were any good. It's like, nobody's calling you for fun. Like they're not calling because they want to make a friend here. They, they, they you know, they, what the problem is like, Anybody who's looking to fix their mouth and, and prepare to spend, you know, a couple thousand, tens of thousands of dollars, they're going to call a few places, right? They're, they're going to want to see like, who do I like the most? Who do I trust the most? Who do I think I'm in, you know, I'm going to be in good hands with. And if you don't have the right, uh, you know, system to, to get that uh, feeling across, like, you know, you're going to be dead in the water, then you can only compete on price. Oh, you should come to us because right. we'll, we'll give you a 10% discount versus the, the, the next lowest guy. It's like, well, what's the future then? You're just going to be the, you know, McDonald's of dentistry in that area, right? And then you have to right. undercut the work you do and you can't do the same quality. And then you get the reputation for just being like, you know, oh, go to that dentist. He does the cheapest work, right? So it's, right. Uh, it's terrible, like a uh, sort of long-term business plan. Um, yeah. But would like, yeah. um, you know, if you had to pick one course to say, look, it, for, you know, uh, what's the program that you feel a dentist could sort of put to use right away? Like, with, is it, was it virtual consults? Like, if more practices were learning how to do this element, that they can probably improve their business? Is it the fee for service type of boutique course? Uh, you know, What's your favorite one, right? And as soon as you don't know anything about them, it's your average dentist. It's like, I love what you're, what you're talking about. Do they talk to you guys first and you kind of learn about their situation and then recommend something? Yeah. Or is there like, where, where's a good place for them to sample what you guys do? Yeah, so I think the first thing to do is uh, go check out the website, right? And you, and you can- you So can yeah, the Thrive that. Dentist, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a continuum, it's 12 courses and uh, they build upon one another. So from- they're built very intentionally. They're mm -hmm. designed to start with Essential, then move to Credo, then Avon. We have these kind of fancy names behind them, but if you leave the, read the little subtitle, you know what they're about. And yeah. we have pages for each and every one of them. What I would say is in going through those and kind of getting a feel for them, you find out where your, where your holes are. Like that's where you want to mm -hmm. target, right? For those that are very clinically adept and have a pretty good business structure, and like, I just want to, I want to bring it to the next level. I would say Avant, right? Photography, video, copywriting, graphic design. It's all the things, right? I'm not just going to teach you how to point a camera. Yeah. You need to know how to edit. You need to how to utilize. You need to know different formats for different places. You need how to involve the team. Um, you need to know how to implement and integrate your photography into your workflow so that it doesn't tax you. All it does is actually reap benefits over and over and over again. Yeah. If you're a dentist who is struggling a little bit in terms of patient flow, or you're having a hard time communicating value, I don't think you start with photography because that's, that's more like tickling, uh, you know, a, scratching an itch versus yeah. dealing with the actual problem, which is you have to understand how to communicate value. And mm -hmm. I think photography is a great skill set to layer on top of that. But my favorite course, honestly, Nick, is Credo. That's the that's the sales course. Mm -hmm. And I like it so much because it's so ethical. And it's it's the one course that if you're a periodontist, you're an endodontist, you're a general dentist, you're in public health, I don't care where you are. It will help you in every facet of your life, not mm -hmm. just dentistry. It'll help you in relationship. We have some testimonials that are like, hey, you saved my marriage through this thing because it's the same principles at play. Yeah. So I think that's the one that really is going to help your practice. Like it's going to make the biggest thing. flow and like really understand yeah. how to, yeah. Okay. hundred percent production. So, yeah. Those are the two I would start with, but you may have some questions. And if you have questions, I would just simply email my assistant who you've communicated with. Yeah. Victoria. She's fantastic. 
Uh, we went yeah. through a bunch of the programs because I was interested of like, okay, photography, but like, what if they're, you know, they're going to say, well, I can just go on YouTube and learn how to use a camera. It's like, but then she took me through the program and it's like, oh, actually this is way more advanced than I thought is the, the actual, how to shoot a photo is a small piece of it, but the entire workflow, the understanding, like how to approach this with the patient and like, how do you use this in, in, in your business? Like that's really 95% of it. It's, it's much more complicated. So I, I wasn't sure initially it was like, are you, is this just a video where you teach them how to set up a DSLR camera? It's like, <laughs> I think that's a piece of it, but it, no, no, it's a very small part of the, uh, how right. you do that. Yeah. No, the best, the best analogy, which I think Dennis can understand here is if a patient comes to you and they keep chipping that composite filling that you did on the mesial number nine, um, which I guess is what two, one, where you guys are, you're mm -hmm. in Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you keep chipping and chipping and chipping it. It's really easy for me to teach you how to just put that composite back, but that's mm -hmm. not really going to solve the problem, is it? It's going to chip yeah. again. So we have to ask, what's the cause of that chip? Why does it keep happening? And that usually is going to be a more comprehensive approach to occlusion, et cetera. It's the same thing with photography. I could teach you how to set up your camera for free. Yeah. The reason why we don't do that, why I don't give you a little like, oh, here's a 15 minute video on how to do that and put it on YouTube is because they actually think it's a disservice to you. Just like I think slapping some composite back on is a disservice to the patient. You have to understand the whole. And if you don't, I'm going to kind of push you into this program. That's going to kind of blow your mind. I'm like, oh, that's why just taking pictures doesn't solve the problem. Yeah, you have that's to understand not the really bigger picture me. here. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I, I, so I'm I can... forcing you into my container because yeah. that's the way I teach. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we, we uh, uh, for for those of interested. So we we have a, uh, a a discount code you guys offered us, right? So yeah, if anybody who wants to sign up to any of these programs, if you use the code Rev Up R E V U P fifty, uh, you can get a fifty yeah. percent discount on all the courses. And just to be clear, we don't get a kickback. We didn't want that. We were very clear with them. It's like, look, I I, I and promoting this because I really think one is going to make our life easier. We can do the SEO. We can build the website to get their, you know, double, triple their phone calls. But it's really not where the problem is. The problem is like, especially with the bigger cosmetic cases, most practices don't really understand um, how to communicate value. Okay. So right. then it becomes a numbers game where you're throwing so much money at like digital marketing to, you know, flood your phone with people so that, uh, you know, hopefully maybe one of them converts. Right. So it's like right. my, my thinking is like, spend less on marketing. Okay. Drop your package to minimum, do one of these courses. So you actually understand how to you and your whole team to communicate value and then ramp the marketing back up because then it's going to work in unison. Right. So, uh, yeah, just so everyone's clear, it's like, there isn't some yeah. sort of special agreement where if you sign up to a course, I get a, you know, a little bit of money. Like, no, there is nothing there. I, I, we really thought this, this was a useful program. Uh, and, and we told their, their team that's like, look, just give whatever discount, you know, to, to the people who want to do this. And we don't need anything out of it. We're, we're promoting it purely because it works. Like you, if you have these elements in your business, it's going to make our life easier because then I'm not wasting my time sending <laughs> 20 implant leads. And then they have this terrible experience. And then they say, Oh, I don't think the marketing's working. It's like, trust me, it's not, that's not the problem. Okay. Right. Um, right. You know, but yeah, like, uh, you know, take advantage of it. It's, it's the really great programs. I've gone through with their team and in, in, in detail of like, well, what are you actually teaching? How does it work? Uh, these yeah. are very in-depth uh, courses, not just on technical skills, but a lot of business knowledge of like, how does this fit into the whole process? How do you fit it into your workflow? So it becomes a core part of the business. Um, and I can tell you that you're, you know, you will see a drastic increase in the amount of patients yeah. you book, the amount of treatment you're doing, the, you know, it'll, it'll really scale up like crazy. Um, well, I, I want to thank you so much yeah. for your time. This was very interesting. Um, you know, so yeah, the, the website, I guess, is the, the best place for them to start and uh, reach out to your team, kind of, you guys walk them through, like, let, let's interview a little bit, figure out where you need to start or how to, how yeah, does Victoria. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, our concierge assistant, Victoria, um, not with a C, so it's not Victoria, it's Victoria, uh, yes, super cool yes. name, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she will happily walk you through. She's amazing what she does. And if there's any questions she can't answer, she reaches out to me directly and we'll get that squared away. I will say that, you know, this is kind of cool. Um, and your audience, I think, they, I think they should know this. I think they should know this. Um, you know, objections, when they come up for a patient, it's the thing mm -hmm. that we always deal with, right? Yeah. Objections are not a are not a statement of where a person wants to go. They're usually a symptom of where they are, mm -hmm. which means that there's something they don't quite understand 
or there's something they're second guessing or doubting and they need help through that. So when we talk about this course and getting 50% off and not, now I'd be like, well, 50% off is kind of a lot. And like, how does this work? And you kind of brought up like, Hey, I'm not getting kickback. I want people to know the reason that it's 50% off, which we never, ever, ever do. Never done that is because of your integrity. Uh, we usually do give an affiliate. And because Nick said, nah, I don't need it. We're basically taking what we would have given to him. And we usually give about a 10 to 20% discount for something like this. Because of your, your generosity, we're just going to say, all right, well then let's give him 50 because he didn't want that. So I want people to know that that's, that's the transparency behind us. It's 50% off because Nick was very generous and, um, and really wants you guys to learn something. So I think that's really cool. No, I mean, our goal is, you know, we have certain components that I think we were really good at doing, but to build a really good business, it's not as simple as like doing some SEO, building a website. There, there's other elements involved that we always run into dentists that um, I think they, they get taken advantage of a lot, right? Because they finish dental yeah. school. And uh, I mean, it happened to me, right? Like when I opened up my first business, I was really good at IT and I, you know, I didn't know how to get more customers, right? So I hired all kinds of companies. I did social media, I did SC, I did all these things. I spent probably about 40 grand in the first year. And at the end of it, I almost went bankrupt, right? Because everyone mm -hmm. promised me the moon and, you know, that, oh yeah, it's going to work really well. And then uh, after about a year, I mean, word of mouth and referrals was still the only thing that was working, right? So right, yeah. I kind of had to dig myself out of a hole because I was close to bankruptcy and uh, figure out how to do this correctly. So I've always valued um, that integrity element of it. It's like, I'm not promoting anything th unless I think this would really help them. And I always never yeah. want any sort of financial incentive where you're questioning like, well, are you promoting this because you're getting a kickback? It's like, I don't need, like we're, right. we, RevUp does well. We're very successful. I don't need extra money. Like the, I just yeah. want to help more dentists grow. And I, I, I honestly think this program is fantastic. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. So I, you know, take advantage of the code. It, it, it's, it's, it's terrific. And uh, you know, but I, I, Hey, I want to thank you for your time. This was, yeah. this was great. I think every dentist, you know, you want to build a fee for service practice. You want to build like a really successful business where people fly down from like a uh, thousand miles away just to come and see you. This is the elements you need. Don't hire some yeah. SEO guy. Don't hire, like this. Not how it works. Learn the business, <laughs> learn the, 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 the flow you got to go through with the patient to, to get them to say yes. It's something that, yeah, like it, you, you, there's no shortcut around that. You, you got to learn this yeah. stuff. Yeah, it makes your life simpler too, which is a cool thing, right? I mean, it's just when you get a well-oiled machine and your team works well for you and they're empowered and patients yeah. are saying yes, um, you know, you, you can actually stay very unattached to it. You don't need the money. Like you said, it's that that's not what yes. you're in there for. And it actually makes you, I think, a more ethical dentist as time goes on. So, you know, there's, there's no real downside to it from my perspective. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate it, Nick. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, I'm here for any and every one of the people who are watching this and just reach out. Fantastic. All right, thank you so much. Okay.